Good morning. It's a brand new day. Welcome to the Jam 316 Devotional Hour. My name is James Okumu. I hope you had a restful night and you are excited about this brand new day that the Lord has given us. Psalms 19, verses 9, 10, and 11. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I've hidden your heart in my heart that I may not sin against you. His word is what we cannot do without. Jesus said, man cannot, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Let's pray as we start off our time together today. Heavenly Father, it is indeed a blessing to be alive today. We give you praise. We bless your name. We declare that there is none like you. May your name be exalted forever. Thank you for blessing us with this day. Thank you for your masses which are new today. Thank you that you have loved us with an everlasting love. Thank you for your grace, O oh God. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you that we have the opportunity to come together to celebrate your goodness and to hear your voice this morning as we begin a brand new day. I want to thank you for everybody who has tuned in today. I commit them before you. I ask that, Lord, as we get into your word shortly, that, Lord, you will speak to each and every individual who is tuned in this wonderful morning. May your word give us courage today. May your word strengthen us today. May your word, my Father, Lord, point the direction in which we ought to go this morning, Lord, we look to you. Heavenly Father, I pray everybody who's tuned in this morning and they feel low and discouraged, even as we talk about overcoming discouragement, that, Lord, they will find courage from your word, that, Lord, you will encourage them, uplift them, O oh God, that my Father, the spirit of discouragement will have no place in them or around them in the name of Jesus, that Lord, like Gideon, they are rising in courage to do exploits for you in the name of the Lord our God. This morning, I thank you for your servant who is here again today. Lord, thank you for that which you have deposited in his heart to share with your people today. As he shares, Lord, give him courage and boldness to share your word, O oh God, and may we hear your voice through him in in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank you for the crew this morning, my Father. I pray that even as we work together, oh God, that Lord, indeed, you will bless the work of our hands. I thank you for family media, another opportunity for us to be on air. May we maximize on today. May everything we do today bring glory and honor to your name, Heavenly Father. And I pray that the people who tune into our station today will find peace, will find blessing, will find a word to encourage them, a word to uplift them, a word, oh God, to confirm that which you are already speaking in their hearts. I want to draw them near to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this nation. Thank you, my father. This is where we are as a nation. Thank you for where you are taking us. I want to thank you for the body of Christ in Kenya, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, bind us together in one accord, in unity, that, Lord, we may continue with the mandate and the assignment that you have given us, O oh God. May others see us, O oh God, and see your glory in us. May we be good ambassadors of the kingdom. I pray for our leaders, O oh God, our leaders in government, our leaders in business, our leaders in the communities, O oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, you will give them wisdom. May we experience peace, O oh God. May we experience prosperity. May we experience growth, Abba Father, in the name of Jesus. May we, O oh God, overcome the things and the vices that are holding us back as a nation to the glory and honor of your name. Lord, this morning we say thank you. This morning we give you praise. I pray for families this morning. I pray for parents, O oh God. Even as we'll be talking about parenting in the next hour, I pray for every parent who's tuned in today. Strengthen them, O oh God. Give them the courage to arise and to keep going on. Give them the wisdom, O oh God, to discipline their children and to raise up their children in the ways of God. For your word tells us to train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they're older, they will not depart from it. This morning, Lord, we love you. This morning, Lord, we honor you. This morning, we give you praise and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody say the good Lord. Amen. We do serve a faithful God. And besides him, there is no other. What scripture are you standing on today? As we continue from where we left off yesterday, Victoria in Donholm is on Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 and 8. And she says she's ready for the fellowship. Our good friend Joyce, all the way in Uganda, has also joined us. Uh, 1 John 1, 9, one of my favorite scriptures. Thank you for sharing that. Januarius in Nakuru City, you are ready for today's fellowship. Nasema Karibu Sana. Joseph Mbatha, my good friend, how are you doing? 
doing. Lamentations 3, 22 to 25 is your scripture. You're ready for today's teaching. We appreciate your company. Mamambula, good morning. You say the Musaos are here listening for today's devotion. Thank you. Lamentations 3, 21 to 24 is your scripture <coughs> as well. Thank you very much. John Gidanga, Abadi Anakuru. Isaiah 41, 10 is your scripture. We appreciate your company. We've got Modoni all the way from Qatar. Modoni, you're also on Lamentations. Mm. 322 to 23. Okay. And I Lamentations, Leon Dio. Joseph Mbatha is on Lamentations 322 to 25. Uh, Modoni, Lamentations 322 to 23. Mamambula, Lamentations 321 to 24. Mm. Now, SMS Zenu Piazumefuatana. How are you in the same place? <laughs> Our head ashes all the way from Nakuru, Joe and Margaret Karibuni Sana. Good to hear from you. We do appreciate your company. Looking at SMSs this morning, Jackie Cheriro, Abari Alangata, Asante Sana. You are on uh, Proverbs 22, 28, Magi from Suna Estate, Jeremiah 29, 11. Rono from Nakuru, Karibu Sana, Ephesians 1, 5. We appreciate your company. So if you are tuned in, keep texting in on 20316 SMS, WhatsApp 786 316 316. That will be good. This week we are talking about overcoming discouragement. If you are discouraged, let us know. Our purpose this week is to encourage you, to uplift you, and to remind you that you know what? You will make it. Whatever is trying to hold you down does not have the power to hold you down you can actually overcome it so if you are in that space where you feel discouraged please let us know as we go on with our conversation for today nehemiah 1 3 and they said to me the survivors who are left from captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach the wall of jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burnt with fire this is the story of nehemiah and how he got the news of what was happening back home and a burden just arose in him and he went into a place of prayer and fasting and we know what happened after that today we talk about loss of loss of vision sometimes you lose direction sometimes you forget <laughs> why you're doing the things you're doing and sometimes it can really get you down Pastor Fantas Njoku is here with us. Mchungaji. Yes, sir. Buenas feel. Buenas feel, sana. How are you doing? I'm well. Good morning. Good morning. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Before we talk about loss of vision, remind us one or two things. General Tuambia vitu zanguvu sana hapa. Remind us one or two things you shared with us yesterday. Uh, I think yesterday uh, we, we said a lot of things. Mm. And, and my take home was uh, that regardless of how tough it is, uh, you must keep on moving. Yeah. Because discouragement is not just... Uh, the fact and, and, and uh, it's not the facts of the of the story. Mm. It's not how real the situation is. Mm -hmm. uh, we said it is a it is a spirit. Mm. Discouragement is a spirit, so that you are not even very uh, uh, very very objective in, in in what is discouraging you. Yes. And I remember you giving a story of a friend that you told right, uh, a friend that was told to write down what is not working and what yes. is working. And most of the times you'll find that what is working is usually more, especially for us children of God. Yeah. What is working is usually more than what is not working. Mm. But again, we said when you receive the word of God, that word will test you. Uh, it will examine you whether you have capacity to hold it to the end. Because mm -hmm. the manifestation, uh, the promise of God is the fulfillment of that promise. When yes. God makes that promise, is a seed, is, he makes it in a seed form. And then it has to first uh, prepare the ground in which it will blossom. Mm -hmm. And then that preparation of the ground is the testing of whether you have capacity to hold on to the end. And when you hold on to the end, you uh, find that you stumble into that which God called uh, you for. Yes. Uh, so I think it's important. Uh, and I think I, we, we, we concluded uh, at the place where I was sharing a testimony, uh, 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 someone that I've, uh, I, I did uh, about two Sundays ago mm -hmm. of how Joseph said, if I know God will surely visit you. Yes. And you remember that promise that God had given Abraham was that your seed will go to captivity for 400 years, mm -hmm. but I will still redeem them. So the victory that Joseph is walking in, uh, he's not, actually his victory is not when he's reigning in Egypt. Mm -hmm. His victory will be when these people return back to their promised land. And, and so for him, when he's dying, he says, uh, I am going my, my, my way, but you guys don't bury me here and don't mm. bury me now. And, and I think a lot of us bury our visions, our dreams too early. And Ooh. when God is getting ready to fulfill that which he said, 
you must have the capacity to carry your dry bones to the promised land. Mm -hmm. It's dragging yourself. Scripture says in the book of Romans chapter number four that Abraham, though his body was dead mm -hmm. and his, Sarah's, uh, his wife's body, uh, Sarah, was dead, yet he believed against hope. He hoped against hope. Mm -hmm. And that is actually what happens when we are going to walk with God. There mm -hmm. are days it will be dark and sometimes it gets darker. Sometimes you praise and it gets darker. Yes. But if you keep on praising, it is going to be just a moment and you're not going to realize how it has shifted. Mm. And all of a sudden you begin to walk in the things that God had for you. And so it, there's a place where you cannot hold back. You cannot, you cannot say, God, now I want to die like Elijah said. Yeah. You must encourage yourself in, in the, the Lord. Lord. Yeah. You must say, God, I'm tired, but I will keep moving. In fact, some, some, there was a question yesterday. We yes, never yes. got the opportunity to ask, yes, yes. to ask it. But somebody asked exactly that statement you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to encourage yourself in the Lord? Uh, it means you just hype yourself. Mm -hmm. You just beat yourself. Wake up. Keep on doing this mm -hmm. in the Lord. Because God is your refuge. Mm -hmm. he's, he's the one that you're depending on. Yes. So when, when every odd is stuck against you, you, your hope is only God. Mm. And so you keep on saying, with the little strength I have, because God does not speak to us, Pastor James, because we have more strength. No. When he came, and I heard you pray that prayer, when he came to Gideon, he didn't even consider the things that Gideon would consider his disadvantages. Yeah. He came to Gideon and said, oh, you man of valor. Yes, he was of little strength, mm -hmm. but he called him a man of valor. Because that little strength is what God knows. I will use this for what I want to do with Gideon. Yes. And most of the times, it's not how much you have. Scripture says it is not by power, it is not by might, but it is by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So you encouraging yourself in the Lord is not depending on what you have. It's not your mm -hmm. chariots, it's not your horses of war, it's not your sword. Mm -hmm. It is, I depend on God. And, and when you present yourself as a weapon in the hands of God, then God partners with you for your victory. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, you think you're the one fighting. It is not you fighting. Yeah. This battle is not yours. It, is, it belongs to God. Mm -hmm. And that is why he will give us strategies in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20. Mm -hmm. You remember him telling Jehoshaphat, that you shall not fight this war. All you mm -hmm. need to do is uh, put Judah in front so yeah. that he can praise, yeah. and then you guys come with trumpets, and when you blow them, I will cause the... And that is God's strategy for your battle. That is why you cannot hold back. That is why you cannot say, I will not go to church, I'm discouraged. Mm -hmm. You must go to church limping. You must go to church uh, crawling. Yes. You must go to church dragging yourself. You must pull yourself until you you discourage that discouragement. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us don't discourage the discouragement. No, we yeah, encourage We it. encourage the <laughs> discouragement. <laughs> we, we have a million excuses why it is not working. Yeah. And you need to get yourself to the place where you must work. It must work. Mm. So you can change strategy. You can change. I remember the pastor that I was uh, talking about uh, him doing ministry in slums or something like that. Yes. You can change strategy. You can uh, change your associations with the people you're working with. Mm. You can change location. But keep on moving. But keep moving. Yes, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't yeah. say I'm taking a break from ministry. There is no. nothing like that with God. No. Actually, I, till, I tell any time somebody comes to me and they tell me, mm. I want to take a break from service. Mm. I know this is the spirit of discouragement has come upon them. The yeah. devil has hit them with the best of their weapons. Yes. Because there is nothing like taking a break. Mm. There is nothing like taking a break. Yes. Yeah. You, you just have to encourage yourself in the Lord and keep on doing and that. And keep on doing it. Yes. Wow. And I think also it's important for us to remind ourselves the promises of God and what God yes. has spoken yes. of us. Yes. You yes. know, I remember a couple sharing how in the 50s, uh, God, through a word of knowledge, told them that they would set up a children's orphanage in Africa. They had never been to Africa. They didn't even know Africa, which country, what are you talking about? But they held on to that word and they continued reminding themselves of that word over and over and over again. It was almost 50 years later that that happened. Wow. Yeah, so the time they were sharing this story with us is when they had actually now set up wow. the, the children's home. Wow. And they were sharing this testimony, how they've been holding on to this word for close to 50 years. Wow. And the interesting thing is that they set up the children's home, but they didn't even run it. That, that is how, it's that their is, children that is how interesting who God ended is. up running it. Yeah, that is how interesting. You know, so I think also just never losing focus. Yes of that promise, yes, yes. that when things around you don't seem to align with the promise, mm. you focus on the promise yes. and not on the things yes. around you. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think that is what we're going to talk to, uh, today about. Yes. Because when we talk about loss of vision, mm. a lot of people that get discouraged, it's not that they don't have visions. Mm -hmm. 
Now, let's first begin by what is vision. Mm. Vision is the ability to put uh, your purpose into something that you can walk into. Mm -hmm. it's, it's when you say, I was called to do this, and so I want to achieve this in this particular manner. Yeah. And a lot of people that get discouraged are very great visionaries. Yes. They, 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 they actually dream so big. Mm -hmm. Actually, what discourages them is, I have this great vision, I see like I have this great potential, yes. but doesn't seem like uh, I am making anything out of it, mm. or things are not moving. And so a lot of times, we begin to feel like I have done all I could do. Uh, and, and, and I have tried as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I have written the vision down, like Habakkuk says, yes. with great letters, that they may read them that uh, are running. Mm. But Pastor James, I was thinking about it when you sent me this, and I said, our greatest uh, issue is not the vision. Mm -hmm. Our greatest issue is the focus. Mm -hmm. And those are two different things. It will mm -hmm. seem like it is the same thing, yeah. but they are two different things. They are two very different things. Yes, yes. It's, it's possible for you to see, but for you putting your eyes on that thing until it comes to fruition, mm -hmm. that is what is called focus. Yeah. Now, one of the birds that have the most clear vision is the ego. Is the ego. Mm. Because they can see very far. I was reading something the other day, I think last week, and, 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 and they were saying that an ego can see, I think, two, three kilometers away. Uh, from up there, mm -hmm. so that it can see something that is crawling. It can see a snake. Yes. It can see it can see its uh, prey down here, about two, 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 three kilometers away. Mm. But you see, the eagle does not catch its prey because it is so. Mm -mm. It catches because after it is so, it put its eyes there as it was coming. It focused. Yes, and against the wind, against the storms. It kept its eyes, it focused. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, Pastor James, it's not that we don't have the vision. Mm -hmm. A lot of us is, you have not held on to that vision mm. and it, until it comes to until reality. Until it comes to pass, yes. yes. And, 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 and it gets to a place, then you begin to discard the vision, and now you begin to look for what is working. Mm -hmm. And just because it is not working immediately does not mean it will not work. If God said it, it can take 70 years, like for uh, Akina Daniel. Mm -hmm. But if he said it 70 years, if you remind him on that 70th, 70th year, he will surely do whatever he said. Mm. So I think we need to bring our hearts to the place where you focus on that which God called you yeah. to. And when you focus, that is where you draw your strength from. But you see, if you don't have anywhere you are going, mm -hmm. uh, in, they say any road will take you there. Yes. Because uh, you will wake up one day and they give you this option. Mm. But you see, if you put your eyes on the ball, you can change how you achieve it. Mm. You can mm. change where you achieve it from. You can change who you achieve it with. Mm -hmm. But you should never change what you want to achieve. A friend of mine once shared this with me. And yes, sir. I've never forgotten. He said yeah. that... There's the vision, mm -hmm. and then there's the vehicle. Yes. And he said the trouble with many of us is we focus on the vehicle. Yes, a lot of times. So when the vehicle breaks down, yes. we give up. Yes. So you're going to Mombasa, Yes. you're on the bus. You focus so much on this bus because of how comfortable it is and yes. everything. The bus breaks down, Yes. and you're done. And, and now to a border, a co yes. yeah, it's uncomfortable on the border, but it can get you to where you're going, but upon the bus. And, and the most interesting thing, Pastor James, about that analogy that you're giving mm. is that we really don't have a lot of choice in choosing the vehicle. Mm. It is God that will choose for us what vehicle what will vehicle? take you at yes. what point. Yes. Uh, because you, you realize uh, that a lot of times there are things you cannot really change in your life. Mm -hmm. And, and most of the times we focus on what we cannot change. Yeah. You are in a situation, it is a catch-22, you can't do anything about it. So you begin to give up on the whole journey just because the circumstances of that time mm -hmm. looks like they're stuck against you. So-and-so uh, said, so-and-so did, mm. so-and-so is doing, mm. uh, the devil is doing. So you, 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 you disregard the journey. But you see, those circumstances are tailored by God. Scripture says in the book of 1 Corinthians, I think chapter number 10, that there is no temptation that has overcome you mm -hmm. unless it is common to, to man. man. Yes. And for every temptation we go through, God provides a way of escape. Yeah. So every single time, God fashions a certain wind, and that wind could be very uncomfortable, a certain mm -hmm. storm. Mm -hmm. But do you know, Pastor James, if there is never wind in the sea, the ship cannot move. True. 
And God wants you to ride through the storms, through the wind, yeah. and all that, so that you can get to the place where you must mm. get to. And he will keep on changing direction and changing the vehicle, depending with where he wants you to be at a particular time. But we don't have the courage to depend on God and keep on moving. That, that, that illustration is very powerful. Because the storms do come with wind. They, they do, yes. But it is the wind that moves the yes, ship. Yes. So you, you, you cannot have movement without that wind. Without that without wind. That, yes. And the storm needs to come with the wind. Yes, yes. Mm, there is no way. In life, life, this is how life shifts. Mm -hmm. Life will either shift by heat, just like water. Mm -hmm. It will either shift by heat or pressure. Yeah. So if there is never pressure in your life, mm -hmm. you will find that you will rarely achieve anything great. People that achieve yes. great things are people that go through certain kind of heat and yes. pressures. And by their thinking, by their response to that situation, that adversity, is what makes them who they become who they, in the future. Uh -huh. Whether it is in terms of character, in terms of achievement, mm. in terms of uh, building wealth, it is the circumstances. And so we must be a people that learn how to take advantage of the circumstances. Mm. So that if you feel like you're losing this, uh, then whatever you have now, let me give an, a, 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 not a very good example. Let's say you've been auctioned mm -hmm. and, 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 and they have come for everything that you had. Yeah. But you know, there is no way they come for everything. Mm. They leave you with something, mm. even if it's just yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can't take you. Yes, they can't take you. Yes. Or sometimes they leave you with great lessons. Mm -hmm. mm. And sometimes it is the lessons you pick. Yes. And say, these are the mistakes I did. I did. Mm -hmm. And because I still have the capacity to build what I built, mm. I will build it but differently. With now wisdom, with grace, mm. with understanding, with a certain kind of uh, knowledge. So that now you, you, you achieve two, three times whatever you achieved the first time mm. and you still have the capacity to safeguard it. Mm -hmm. uh, you see. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the reason things are coming, uh, they are coming so that they can they can put you under pressure so that you can become a better version of yourself. Yeah. See, Pastor James. But a lot of times, it's not that we don't have the vision. Mm. We lose the focus. We lose the focus. We, we concentrate. And if you read that story of Nehemiah, you will find mm -hmm. that Nehemiah, number one, he had a vision. He put, he put, uh, he was able to put his vision together because he realized I'm here for a purpose. Yeah. The reason why I'm serving the king yeah. is because I'm supposed to talk to the king concerning how the walls have come down. And when he said to go, scripture says that he did the work because the people had the mind to work. To work. Let me take you back to something you've said that I think is very important. Yeah. You said he recognized that he was where, we, where he was yes. because of purpose. Yes, yes. And I think sometimes that is something that uh, many of us fail to ask ourselves, why am I here? Yes, yes. Why yes. am I here yes. now? Who am I going through whatever I'm going through Yes. Now? Because sometimes God puts you in a place for the sake of purpose yes. that is so bigger than yes. you. Yes. It's like it's like Joseph understood yes. Yes. why why he had power. Yes. Yeah. So that even when his brothers came, told him, My friends, you did it for evil, but God had a plan. He saw the big picture. And because he saw the big picture, he took advantage of it. And you know, a lot of times it's because God wants to raise a different generation, yes. a different seed yes. from the other seed. So yes. the way God separates you, it's possible that we all are enjoying our, our, our family property. Mm -hmm. We all are enjoying our land. But because yeah. God wants to separate me, so they push me out like they pushed Jephthah. Y yes. Or, or, or something just happens and now I find like I'm alone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, we are not, they're not even pushing me, but somehow they are not talking as if we are together mm -hmm. we, <laughs> for, some reason. for some reason. So God wants to separate you. Mm -hmm. and, and so you must ask yourself, why, why? why are these odds like this? Mm -hmm. Why is it that they kicked me out? Why is it that we couldn't agree on matters of principle. Maybe we are running uh, an organization with you, mm. and then you want to corrupt, and then I don't want corruption, mm. and then all of you guys gang up. Maybe they are not even against me. They, are, they just don't believe my story. Yeah. Uh, they just gang up against me. You must ask yourself, why is it it, it is me like this? Mm. You remember the story of Rebecca, mm -hmm. when he conceived, uh, uh, when he conceived uh, Jacob and Esau, because he had been barren, she had been barren for a long time. Mm. She said, God, if it is you, why am I like this? Because yeah. there was a struggle in her. Yeah. And you must always ask yourself, God, if it is you, 
why am I like this? Mm -hmm. Because that is going to be what begins to divine, define your vision. Mm -hmm. And when you define your vision, then you have to have the mind to work. And when you have the mind to work, you don't have space for distraction. You don't have space for, uh, it is too tough. People that achieve a lot of things in this life, Pastor James, mm -hmm. they don't say it is too tough. They mm -hmm. say it is tough, but they keep on moving. You, you, you leave them like they, you left them for dead. And then they wake up the next day, they are preaching in some other place like they did for Paul. Yes. <laughs> yes, they, they, they beat him. Yeah. And, and the guy has enough resources to give up. Mm. Uh, whether it is by stroke, so that it is by stoning, there is a time they beat him and they, they left him for they dead. They left him for dead. There is a day that they had to drop him with a basket from yeah. a certain high building. But that guy had the reasons to give up, but didn't he kept give moving. up. He kept on moving. Yes. And then you will find that in the life of Paul, he was an achiever. He was a great achiever. And he was saying, I must preach to the Gentiles. I have been I called. Must. Yes, it's a must. I think one of the things we never ask ourselves is why. Yes. I, I was preaching a series some time back and I was telling the, I was preaching on consistency. Yes. And I was telling the congregation that when your why is not strong enough, your excuses will wow. discourage you. Wow, very true. Yeah. But you will have, have the a, reasons. Yes. When you know why, yes. I like that statement. I must yes. preach to the Gentiles. Yes. I must. Yes. There's no option. There's no I option. must. Yes, there's no option. But many Actually, of us. Jesus one day said, after he had been stoned, uh, in, he, they had dared to stone him in Jerusalem. Mm. And then uh, the other day, he wants to go back there to yeah. raise Lazarus. And then he says, I must go, I must go to Jerusalem. Yes. As in, I don't have options. Yeah, I well, must. I must. I must. As in, if I die, let me die. And I think a lot of us people, a lot of us, Pastor James, mm. we are afraid of death. Mm. But you will never receive the fullness of life mm -hmm. unless you go through the dying process. Hmm? Scripture says... Say your tenor, say your tenor. You, <laughs> you will never receive the fullness of life uh -huh. until you go through the dying process. Ooh. Scripture says a corn abides alone if it does not die. Yeah. It is the dying of the corn yes. that causes it to produce. Mm. And if a vision is going to uh, live, that is why you will find people like David after they were anointed. They had, going, they had to go through the dying process. I'm telling you. Because yes. after 17, uh, I think he was anointed around 17 years. Mm. And then he had to wait until he's dirty something yeah. else to take the throne. That whole 13 years was dying. He had to bury himself to the vision. He had to wait. Mm. He had to think it is gone. And it is in the dying that there is resurrection. He had to live with the enemy. He yes. had to live in the, in the caves. He had to live in the forest, in the wildernesses. It is called the dying. The same thing with Joseph, he had got to go through the mm. dying. But even as you go through the dying, when you rise up, you rise up stronger, you rise up better, you rise up with clarity. Mm -hmm. You see, now for Nehemiah, uh, he goes through uh, the trials of Tobias and Sanballat. Mm -hmm. And you remember there's a time they came to him and they wanted to make a treaty with him. Yes. But he said, you guys are, are very small. Mm. I cannot leave my work to attend to you. Ooh. And a lot of times, our lack of vision or our loss of vision is that we leave the work that God has called us yeah. to attend to small things. And sometimes those things are family disputes, mm -hmm. family feuds. Somebody that wants you guys to keep on casing over things that are not there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you must keep your eyes on the ball. David said when he came to Goliath, and they were asking him, mm. uh, you small boy, what did you come to do here? <laughs> There's something that David said that was very powerful. Mm -hmm. He said, is there not a cause? Aha. Uh -huh. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Yes. Is there not a cause? I am, I am not here by myself. No. I am here because there is something that must be achieved, and you guys have not achieved it. Well. I am not fighting for myself. Yes. If I die, let me die. But I'm dying for a good cause. Yeah. And Pastor James, when you say, I'm, going, I'm, I'm willing to die, I'm willing to put it all out there. Mm. If I lose, let me lose. But I'm losing for a cause. You say, I'm, I'm going to go on this prayer mountain for seven days. Mm. I'm going to go on this prayer mountain for 21 days. If I lose, if I die, let me die. Let me die. But I want to see the hand of the Lord. It is such kind of people that see the victory of God. Where? But you see, a lot of times you want to hold back. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't die for people. Yeah. I can't die for them. Uh. But, but you see, when God calls you, God does not call you to live for yourself. Mm-hmm. There is nobody that is great in this life that lives for themselves. Lives, yeah. If you want to be forgotten the day you are buried, 
live for yourself. Live for yourself. Yes. Even if you make all the money in the world, the day we put you in the grave, mm. we, we erase all your name. We will forget you. Mm -hmm. But if you want to succeed, live for a cause. And, and sometimes I know we bash the politicians, Pastor James, mm -hmm. but I look at politicians and I know some of them live for themselves. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I keep feeling like we have those that all they are going through is because they believe in a cause. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is there are some mm -hmm. that can make money without being in politics. Yeah. There are some that have made enough money, they can live very comfortably yes. without being in politics. But I keep on looking at their lives. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we bash the politicians, Pastor James. Mm -hmm. But I look at them, a lot of those guys are hard workers. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, they wake up early in the morning. They go, they hit the gym, they read newspapers, they read books. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. But you see, there is this mentality that we have that they are there by luck. Mm -hmm. In life, it is very hard for you to see somebody that throws by luck. Yes. Even when a fool looks like they are raining, it's, there, is a, there is a place they put the hard work. <laughs> More than the one that was called the wise. Yeah. I, I, I have issues with the man that saved the city and then he remained poor. There must have mm. been principles he didn't learn. Because it's possible you have wisdom of application. Yeah. But you cannot apply it to you. To you. And that is why you will find anytime scripture talks about wisdom, there is knowledge and there is understanding. Mm. Because if you get wisdom and knowledge without the understanding, you actually can look like you are doing too much and you're not doing you're anything. You're not doing anything. Yes. Because it is not good for you to save a city and remain broke. It means you don't know how to negotiate. It means that you don't know how to release your wisdom. Mm. It means maybe you gave your wisdom to the wrong person yes. or something like that. Because the moment you know how to do it the right way, it should benefit you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we have people in life who don't rise by, just by, by, by faith. Mm -hmm. People that rise in life, they, they are true to their vision. They stay on course. Mm -hmm. Some of them go back to school when they're still old. If you go back to yeah. and, and look at the lives of a lot of MPs, you'll find yeah. that most of them are in schools. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we just need to learn from the aunt. The aunt is not a big animal. But, <laughs> but it knows summer is coming yes. uh, and winter is coming. So during summer, the aunt does everything. And, and I think our politicians could be ants. They, they are. <laughs> <laughs> they are not are. very big, but, yeah. but, but they, 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 they know how to do a few things. Very there's, well. a, there's a story I read. Yeah. I don't know whether I read a story or I was listening to a podcast. Yes, yes. Of this gentleman who always wanted to be a doctor. Yes. But life happened. Yes. And he ended up in another career, and he went through that career until he retired. Uh-huh. And after he retired, do you know what he told himself? Mm -hmm. Ah, now I have resources, I've built up. Now I have time. Yes. I'm still going to become yes. a doctor. Yes. He went back to school. Yes. For another five, six yes. years. Yes. And he became a doctor. Yes. In his 70s. Yes. And you'll find that he did not do that just for himself. Yes. He did that for somebody else and for a generation. Mm -hmm. Because if, if I'm going to leave a legacy for my children, mm. that legacy cannot be just money. Yeah. And it cannot just be a house and a car. That is not the inheritance that the scripture talks about when mm -hmm. it says a good father leaves an inheritance for his children and his children's children. Yeah. It, is, it means more than that. Sometimes it is casting the vision. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is a good deed that you do. You see like what um, David did. Yeah. He thought, I have achieved a lot. Mm -hmm. I have fought every battle. I have never lost one battle. So what I will do, I will build God a house. Mm -hmm. That idea, that vision was the inheritance that he gave to Solomon. To Solomon. Then God said, I will not allow you to build me a house. But the one that comes after you, so now the responsibility of somebody mm -hmm. from the loins of David to come after David is on God. Yeah. Because now he won't seem to complete the vision yes. that he started. Yes. So if, if, if you have resources and say, I want to start a children's, like what you gave us mm -hmm. here, I want to start a children's home so that I can help assist. Mm -hmm. Then God will say, number one, I will uh, prolong your years. But number two, I will make sure that this does not fail. Mm -hmm. So there will always be a generation that rises with resources. Yes. And they will never lack resources. They will never lack connections. Mm -hmm. There will never arise a king that does not know Joseph, that will begin to mm -hmm. eat on your wealth. Because there is something I want to safeguard. And this project that you've started is not your project. It's, it's my got, project. Yeah. It's my project. And, 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 and you keep on doing it. You keep on doing it. The things that we need to leave for our children uh, sometimes it's that casting of that vision. Mm -hmm. When you conceive it in God, but that vision, Pastor James said, it cannot be, by, it cannot be for yourself. Okay. Uh, 
don't, don't dream about having an okay those are things we say and 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 and, and imagine mm. because they are nice mm. of driving a big car having mm -hmm. a nice home but attach that to purpose yeah. uh -huh. the moment you begin to live for purpose you'll find that those things, things easily fall into place mm. say i will support a certain cause I will be a giver in this church. Mm -hmm. I, I have found a young pastor somewhere. He's doing the work of the Lord. Mm. He's not manipulating people. I will support, I will him. support him. And I will support him with the small resources I have. A lot of us are saying, God, if you bless me, I will be a kingdom financier. Mm. But you don't, have, you don't need God to bless you for you to be a kingdom financier. No. You need to be a kingdom financier and the blessings of God will follow because mm -hmm. he has already blessed you. You see? Yeah. And then you just need to take the small resources. Don't wait to be a billionaire to support no. a ministry. No. Don't wait to be a billionaire to say, I'm going to pay rent for Pastor G. I'm not sure whether you're renting. Maybe I think you own a house or something. Prophesy, <laughs> prophesy. <laughs> Don't say I will wait. One day soon. <laughs> I will wait to be a millionaire to, so to, to pay a whole day's rent for Pastor James. Mm -hmm. See, the, with the little I have, I don't even know how, how much he pays, but I will consistently send a certain amount of money every month mm -hmm. for Pastor James. That thing is going to open doors for you because when, whenever there's a friend of mine that pays rent for about four or five pastors in the village, Mm. And I keep on feeling this girl can never, can never lose her job. She actually has to be promoted every year. Yes. She has to get crazy deals because God is, protect, God is thinking about the pastors. Mm. When he's thinking about the pastors, now he has to bless this girl. Because she's agreed to be a vessel. Yes, he's used. agreed to be a vessel. It's interesting you say that because just this weekend, <laughs> I was hanging out with uh, one of our pastors. Uh -huh. I've known him for a long time. There's a season in his life he was homeless. And we were just thinking back and thanking the Lord. And I was telling him, man, you've been faithful. Where? <laughs> you've been faithful. There are times he would come to church and you would look at him and think, man, God, who is the to buy a tunguo? Wow. Your trouser may be passing, wow. you're safi, lakini, man. Wow. It's almost becoming see through. Wow. Because it's like he only has two or yeah. three trousers. Wow. Wow. And he's on the worship team. But he kept at it and he kept at it. You know, and we were saying, this guy was so faithful. Akipata so. Analeta ten bob. And I said, Mami, I am going to God. Look at that. And so he was telling us, he decided from a long time ago, mm -hmm. back in those days when he, he, life was hard, he says, God, me, I want to finance this kingdom. And he said, I began, he said, I began there. Tell, and he told God, you know what, God, me, Yanni, when I think about what you have done for me in this new dispensation we live in of, 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 of Christ and grace and salvation vis-a-vis -vis the Old Testament, and those guys, <laughs> they were required. <laughs> They were required <laughs> to give 10%. To yeah. me, I'm not required, yeah. but me, I can't give 10%. Mm -hmm. So he said, he said wow. I started increasing 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20. Yeah. And he said, what I have seen God do for me is unbelievable. Wow. He's a pastor, yes, yes. but he's actually the one supporting the church. Wow. The church can't support him wow. because the church can barely support itself. And he was saying, man... Sometimes God gives me deals and I look back and I'm just thinking, what? Wow. But I know why he's given yes. me this deal. Yes. Because we need to pay rent for church. Yes. Yes. And yes. he's faithful to do it. Yes. I know why he's given me this. Because there are three, four guys that need to go to yes. high school. Yes. And he's faithful with that. Yes. And I was listening to him and I thought, wow. Even so what you're the, saying is very Even true. when the devil wants to take you out, mm -hmm. there is a reason good enough. Father, this one build us a temple. Mm -hmm. They cannot be sick of that disease. No. Uh, you see, and, and I think we just need to come to that place mm -hmm. where we know that God is calling us to partner with him mm -hmm. to achieve our great dreams and visions. Yeah. And, and, and the, the whole story of Nehemiah, Pastor James, I love that you picked that book because the whole story of Nehemiah, Nehemiah was living a good life. Mm. He, was the, he was the king's camp yeah. there. So he's yeah, living in the sour. palace, yes. He's living in the palace, cooking tea, eating whatever he wants around <laughs> there, serving the king. He's, yes. he's okay. But when he heard that the walls of Jerusalem are in ruins, the countenance mm. fell. I, I cannot be enjoying my life here. Yeah, and yes. he said, like Moses, I cannot be enjoying my life here, whereas my people are suffering. Mm. I will seek permission from the king so that I can go and build the walls and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And he was not rebuilding for his legacy. No. He was building so that the name of God is not put to shame. Mm -hmm. This is the city of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So it cannot be in ruins. So he wow. put... He took it upon himself and said, I will go to build the walls. And so I think we need to, uh, to wire and, 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 and write our visions within the vision of God. Mm. 
what is God's greatest desire mm. is to spread his kingdom. Mm. Whether it is by preaching, whether it is by helping the poor, mm. whether it is by doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The moment you put your mind into the kingdom, yeah. scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm. And ma most of the times, Pastor James, we never know what it means to seek the kingdom of God. Mm -mm. We, we actually think it's uh, sometimes, uh, I, I don't know what we think, because I think we, we just take part of the seeking of the kingdom yeah. of God. But it's pursue the kingdom of God. Seek that the will of God may be established on others as it is established in, in heaven. heaven. And yeah. get an aspect of it and push it. Maybe you're called to be an intercessor for your pastor. Mm -hmm. Pray without failing. Yeah. It is an enough calling. Don't compare yourself. With, Don't yes. want even to be a worship leader. Your calling is in the intercessory. Pray for your pastor. Mm. And there is no great ministry that re, uh, drives and survives without people praying for it. Mm -hmm. Say, my responsibility in this ministry will be to will pray, be to pray. Will be to give. And the moment you put your vision there, I tell you, Pastor James, you rise, you increase, uh, and a lot of things will keep falling into place. This morning we are talking about, we continue with our series for the week of overcoming discouragement. Today we are talking about uh, loss of vision, or it should be loss of focus. Even as Pastor is telling us, it's not that people necessarily may not have a vision. Sometimes we just lose the focus of the vision and we begin to focus elsewhere. Are you discouraged this morning? Have you given up on something, on a vision? You know, there's somewhere you are going. There's something that God had showed you. There's something that you are pursuing. But because of the storms in between what you saw and what you need to achieve, you've kind of given up on it. You, you're even questioning yourself, was this really from God? You know, maybe I was not cut out for this and you are feeling discouraged. Talk to us, 20316 SMS line, WhatsApp number 786 316 316. It's about 20 minutes before we get to 7. Jam 316 on both Family TV and Family Radio 316. It's about a quarter to 7. This week, we talked about overcoming discouragement. Today, we focus on loss of vision. Pastor Fantas Njogu is with us in studio. Your thoughts and comments are coming in. Uh, Isaac, you say a very important point there, having pastors who teach knowledge and understanding, what a blessing it is. Asante Sana, okay, this is, uh, this is something else. Mchungaji, back to the whole conversation about vision. Yeah. Maybe even as I was saying, uh, as we were listening to that song, somebody once told me uh, that when we talk about vision, we should never think about our vision, but we should always figure out what is God doing? How is God moving? Yes. And what's my place on that bus? Yes. It's not my bus. Yes. Yeah. I'm not, not driving it where I want. Yeah, it's not. God is going somewhere. Mm. How do I align myself with where God is going? Yeah. Because once I align myself with where God is going, then I find a purpose and I fit into what he's doing. Yeah. It's never about my vision, it's about his vision. His vision it's never about my side. God is on our side. Yes. No, no, no. Yes. God is never on our side. Yes. God has his side yes. and he get, changes not. Yes, get on, on We're the, the ones sides. to get on God's <laughs> side. Very true. Yeah, I don't know Very what true. you think about that. Um, the, the enemy's greatest strategy mm -hmm. is distraction. Mm -hmm. You see, he comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But yeah. the way he will do that is by distracting you. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor James, you will find that uh, you got on a certain journey, but because it had your blessings, somebody hurt you on that journey. Uh -huh. So you get to serving Pastor Fantas. Mm. And maybe Pastor Fantas had not grown to the level that he knew how to handle relationships. Yes. So he probably abused you or took advantage of you. Yeah. And that caused you to get hurt. And then you branded all men of God and all churches mm -hmm. a certain way. Yes. So you retreated back from service. Because the enemy knew that if you continue serving, mm -hmm. you will have a legacy for yourself and for your children, children yeah. and you'll step into great things that God has for you yeah. that are beyond yourself. Yeah. But the only way the devil could have done that is by trying and testing you. You see, if, if David uh, concentrated on his relationship with Saul, Mm -hmm. Number one, you would have said, Samuel, you are a liar. Yeah. There is no way you can anoint me yes. and the man that is supposed to raise me then begins to want to me. begins to hunt me. Let me go back and look after my small yes. father's flock. I didn't pray for this. I didn't want this. I didn't this. ask for it. Yes. 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 But he knew if I go that way, it is distraction. So even what looked like it was a fight from Saul was really wanting to destroy the vision of mm. David in him ruling Israel. Mm. And then so he had to have the kind of focus that says the issue here is not Saul. 
This wow. is an evil spirit that is trying to test me, mm -hmm. and so I don't need to fight the man. That is why even when he had opportunities to mm -hmm. kill Saul, he, didn't. he said no. That, that is going to destroy and it's going to uh, shift the focus of what I'm, I'm trying to build. So I cannot, just, I cannot touch Saul. Mm -hmm. He's the anointed one of the Lord. Yes. What will people say? That the son fought the father? I don't want that to be. I don't wow. want God to turn against me. So I will put my eyes on the ball. It's not the man. Yeah. So when even he got the place and he was talking to Saul, he told him, you need to change your bodyguards. Mm. You need to change your counselors. How can they be sleeping when the king is sleeping? Yeah. He looks like he's advising Saul. Yeah. Because his eyes is, I don't need to fight this man. I, if I keep on moving, he, one day his uh, reign will come to an end. Yeah. The same thing with Joseph. Yeah. He said, I don't need to be bitter with you guys. No. No, you guys were selling me. You thought you were destroying me. But it was God that had planned that the mm -hmm. only way I can come and preserve Israel at such a time as this is only if you guys sold me. Mm. Because you remember their first plan was to kill was him. Was to kill him. And then Reuben came and said, mm. why do we have to kill him? We can, we can, we can sell him. Mm. And then they sold him and then they thought the guy's gone. Many years later, yes. is the man they are finding in, in Potiphar's mm. house as the gatekeeper of, of the storehouses mm. of, of Pharaoh. And, and Pastor James, destruction is going to be the greatest uh, thing that steals or the greatest strategy that the enemy uses to steal the mm -hmm. vision of God. Mm. I don't know whether you watch documentaries, mm -hmm. but if a lion has put its eyes on a hair, and you know a hair is small, yes. even if an antelope comes by, because the lion wants to survive and get yes. a meal that day, yes. it does not stop chasing the hair for the antelope. Mm -mm. It keeps its eyeballs on the hair until mm -hmm. it gets the hair. Because he, he has already succeeded to a certain degree because number one, he saw the hair first. Yeah. Number two, now the hair is already getting tired because of running. Yeah. But if he started, he's starting with the antelope, he's starting running against some, some animal that is stronger and mm -hmm. has not gotten tired at all. Yeah. So the chances of getting that animal are slower. And Pastor James, a lot of times we get distracted by things. Sometimes you're chasing an antelope and then a squirrel passes by and then mm. you feel like I can get a grab of the squirrel. And we need to put our eyes on the ball. Yeah. Whatever and whichever way you started rising, don't stop rising that same mm -hmm. way. Don't, don't listen to the stories of the media. They, they, mm. will, they will brand the church. Yeah. They will call all of us pastors uh, wicked oh, and yeah. evil and oh, yeah. manipulators and haters. Mm -hmm. But ask yourself, Pastor James, mm. uh, do you know we have, we have more great pastors than we have crooked pastors? Very true. But the reason why the devil is branding the church a certain way is yeah. so that it can deny you the blessings of God. Mm -hmm. They will attack the tithe on social media mm. so that you can stop giving. Because mm -hmm. your blessing is that if we can count the men that have received a blessing mm -hmm. because of their consistent giving yes. in tithes and offerings and other givings in the house of God, those people are too many. Mm -hmm. We are all products of that. I know yeah. you have ever tried God in giving and so what God yes. did after giving. And then so the devil wants to brand that a certain way so that he can distract you. Mm. This is not so good for you. And then he will tell you the way you will rise is by saving some more. Yeah. And then the more you save, you find, by the way, I'm, I'm going through a certain circle. Mm -hmm. Because in whatever I'm doing, there is no hand of God. And so, Pastor James, like you're saying, I think we just need to avoid the distraction. Mm -hmm. We need to put our eyes on the ball. Yes. What is God doing? If this is his work, let me partner with God. If, if, if this is a man of God, let me partner with him. If this is a vision of God, let me partner with God. Mm -hmm. And the moment you do that, you will find that you will keep on increasing and growing. Actually, a lot of times, and I heard this from John Carson many years ago, mm -hmm. he, he picked this scripture that when Jesus was tired and about to be crucified, he took his towel mm -hmm. and, 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 and washed the disciples' feet. Yeah. And he was saying, the moment you come to a place of discouragement, what you need to do is serve more. Mm -hmm. But you see, most of the times when we are discouraged and, and fatigued, we withdraw from withdraw, service. Yeah. But you need to serve more. That mm -hmm. is the way of the master. When Jesus was facing the cross, mm -hmm. What he did is I washed the disciples' feet. Yes. I must be on my father's business. Mm -hmm. And the moment you are there, you will not get discouraged. A lot of us lose vision because uh, we keep feeling like this is my space. Mm. I need to fight for my healing. We are very comfortable in our wounds. Just let me be here. I will yes. heal. I will come back to church. Yeah. I will heal. I will talk to you. But you don't realize that the, what the enemy will do, will do in that window of time 
it will be so massive that you will never get to the place uh, that you're supposed to get to in this life. Mm. And sometimes the, the, the someone you are missing because you felt hurt or discouraged, ah. it's probably going to be the someone that you're going to need three years later yes. for you to become what you're supposed to become yes. in life. Yes. And a lot of times, Pastor James, I know you are a pastor and you have witnessed that people miss great lessons and then they come to ask you for those lessons mm. years later. Mm. You're almost referring them, go and look for that yeah. recording somewhere. 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 Yes. And that time it would have been more practical because it, was, it, it, would, have been, it would have had more life because it was God talking to people without a situation. Mm. So this would have helped you. But you, you coiled back. I said, ah, let me go and heal. Mm. In, the, in the battlefield, Pastor James, you heal as you go. Mm -hmm. You heal as you go. You keep moving. When, yes. When the enemy is attacking you, you cannot say, let me first go and tie this wound. You leap as you shoot. Mm -hmm. And you remember what Nehemiah did. Yes. Nehemiah said, some of you are going to take we are going to take the shovels and, and the cement as we build. Mm -hmm. We will have our arrows here. Yes. In case the enemy comes. So there is no time of us defining it. It's time for war. It's no. time to build. Uh, 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 uh. We build. The work cannot stop. Yes, the work cannot stop. There is nothing that's going to stop this work. Yeah. They call him on the side. He says, no, no, I don't have time for that. I came here to rebuild the walls. Mm -hmm. If you guys had these walls before and you did not think about rebuilding, mm. you cannot tell me anything. I have the whole backup. Yeah. And when you keep on moving, you have God's backup. Mm -hmm. God, God will see your resilience. God will see the days you went to church in one trouser like that, brother. Yes. He will see the days you served God without a car. And one day he will give you a car. He will give your children cars. Mm. And he will give another generation very great things because of you. Yeah. If you keep on moving. Mm. But the moment you keep on saying, I don't have food. I cannot serve God. Serve God mm. as you look for a meal. Mm. Saying, yes, God, I will go sell sugar cane. But I will preach to the people that I'm selling the sugar cane to. Yeah. I will sell the eggs. But I will talk to the people. You don't have to leave this and do this. No. And a lot of times you think, I can't do this and do this. Yeah. You can do this and do this. You can teach the word as you build, as you, as build. you protect yourself. Yes. yes, you can do it. Don't lose the vision. Whatever happens, mm -hmm. keep on going. Let your eyes be on the ball. Mm. Don't lose the focus. Don't lose the focus. Yes. I see. What would you say to those people who have so focused so much on the, on the, on the winds and the storm? They are sinking, and they don't know how to retrace back to focusing on the vision. Because sometimes we get so mixed up in what's happening around us, and we get into this whirlwind of discouragement, and we don't know how to pull ourselves out of it anymore. You just need to go back to your vision. Mm -hmm. That is why scripture says in the book of Habakkuk, write your vision down. Yeah. Always, always, when God talks to you about a promise, about what you need to do, mm. about things you need to achieve, write them down. Write them down. And when things are not working, go back to what God told you. Mm -hmm. You see, Pastor James, and I'm giving this example not because somebody has left my church. If somebody leaves your church, mm. sometimes you tend to concentrate on the one that left. Yeah. But you're forgetting this person was sent by God for a particular season, mm. for a particular time. When that time is gone, they will leave. They will leave, yeah. And I don't need to focus on this one. Mm -hmm. there, are, there, are, there are 50 more that are left. Yes. There are 10 more that are left. There are 20 more that are left. Yeah. But you see the enemy causes, you're not a strong preacher. Why did so-and-so leave? Mm -hmm. You're not a good person. Why did so-and-so leave? Yeah. Because then me go back to what did God tell me to do? to do? When he sent me or when he called me, he mm. called me alone like Abraham. Mm -hmm. So he didn't tell me I will send a particular person. There no. was no contract between me and the members. Yes. He said go and start a church. Whether I send a hundred members, you minister to the ones that I've sent at a particular that time. time. When that season shifts and I send others or I send them out for mm. some more reason, mm. keep on doing what I told you. Yes. Pray, study, teach the word of God like you have a thousand of them. Yes. Don't get distracted by one that left. One customer that pulled out does not mean your business will fail. Will fail. And sometimes God will allow one customer to leave. And you'll have ten others that are buying different quantities, but it is a multiplication of that one customer. Very true. Yeah, so I, I think you just need to go back to your vision. Yeah. What were you called to do? Mm. You, God did not tell Gideon, I will send you a particular person. He did not give him names. No. Is that you go, I will give you an army. Yes. When he went and searched for 10,000 people, God said, those are too many. Mm. I, I, I really can't work with those people. Cut them down. He crafted a strategy. They came to, I think, 300. 3,000 first and then 300 mm. later. And, and you see, it is the 300 that I want to come with you. Yeah. 
and when they are done with their assignment, I will raise another God, people. No. And God can raise people from trees. God can raise people from dry bones like he did with Ezekiel. <laughs> yes. God, God can raise people from anywhere. Wow. So you keep on doing. Don't concentrate on who is not working. Mm. Just because you don't have the support of your brother does not mean you will fail. Just because you don't have the support of your sister does not mean you will fail. They could mm. be your blood brothers, but that, that does not mean that you guys are supposed to be doing life together. Very true. You have a different race, you have a different journey. Keep on going, keep on moving. You will find your people on that journey. Yes. You will find your resources on that journey. You will find your victories on that journey. So right. your time is up, we need to pray. Can we, can we talk to the management to push the second? <laughs> <one? laughs> we need to talk to management. We need to pray. Uh, let's pray. Yeah. Everlasting Father and good God, mm. thank you because you called us and you called us alone like you called Abraham. Mm -hmm. You sent him, God, to Canaan. And God, at some point, he felt like he needed to settle in Haran. Mm. But above Father God, that was not the end. Sometimes we settle in the places of pain, mm. in the places of bitterness, mm. in the places, God, of lack, in the places of adversity. Sometimes, God, we focus too much on the wind, on the storm, on what is not working. I pray that, Job, God, today, by the help of God, you will cause us to have the mind to work, mm. to focus on that which, God, we must focus on, on our Savior, Jesus Christ, on the victories that, God, you've given us and that you will give us, on the journey that, God, you called us on, and, Job, God, on the journey that, Abba, Father, God, you've set us on. Father, God, I pray for everybody that is losing focus today, that, Abba, Father, God, you will bring them back to themselves yes. and back to you. Mm. Job, God, give them the Focus they need to achieve the things they need to achieve in this life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke again today mm. the spirit of discouragement that yes. is caused by the battles that the enemy brings uh, to our doorsteps of distraction. So that Jehovah God, we don't focus on the assignment of God. I pray that Jehovah God, you will return us to yourself, mm. re-energize us, refresh us, strengthen us, every single one of us, whether it is businessmen, family people, Abba Father, people serving in ministries, Jehovah God, in whatever aspect of our lives, I pray for refreshment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be glorified to the Holy Spirit and be lifted up in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Chungatia Santi. Karibu sana. May the Lord bless you. I'm, I'm also blessed. We have a gentleman all the way from Malawi. He's called Singleton Firi from La Malawi. He says, overcoming discouragement, this is our wow devotion. I have been so much encouraged. Now I know that I am passing through a dying process and I'm about to resurrect. Thank you Hallelujah. for that message. Hallelujah. Well, we'll pick up this conversation again tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in. In the coming hour, we get into Parenting Tuesday. So see you For time. watching, remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get notified whenever we upload new, fresh content every day. Stay tuned and enjoy fresh, uplifting content. <laughs>